What's this? Hey, goodie bag. Hey, goodie bag for a baddie. Oh. oh. No, it's not. Yes, I'm genuinely moved, even though I remain. Oh, thank you. Hi, Barry Sutton here, local Britpop legend, it says here. Clearly doesn't. And this is a song called Love and Jaws, which is so self explanatory, I don't even need to be saying this. So I'll stop. Time move on, but I'm loving yours. Time move on, yeah. Time move on, but I'm loving yours. Only loving yours, yeah. Yes, lad. <laughs> uh, so, hello and Hi. welcome to the yeah. Red Shutter Club. Yes, hello Shannon. Hello Ellie. <laughs> uh, today we have with us the one, the only, Barry Sutton. The non and only. The non and only. <laughs> In the words of Cheesy Wanks, I am the non and only. That was his take on Zen Buddhism. Apparently. No, I just made that up. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Big fan of cheesy wanks. All right. Uh, question. When you're speaking, do you mind bringing the mic closer to you so I can bring the gain a bit? No, not at all. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> More diction. Speak clearly and concisely. Yes, does. Why doesn't that surprise <laughs> me, James? I'm watching you, brother. Uh, so, Barry, I feel like just... Just go on. Tell us your story. Okay, then. Politically, Groucho Marxist, socialism in one-liners. Um, 
I don't know. It, it, it's a funny old one because I've lingered around for years like a bad smell. Uh, I suppose people will be bit to me CV that people recognise uh, the Lars 1988 to 89, which was like, uh, if anyone out there has seen the film um, Jacob's Ladder, that's what the experience was like, but I learned a whole load about playing music. Uh, played with Cass for a month, and I'd really rather not talk about that, if that's okay. Uh, played with Smaller, with local bitterness legend, Peter Digsy Deary. I was lucky enough to work for The Fall, um, between the ages of 17 and 20. Uh, actually ended up singing on stage with Marky Smith a couple of times, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I've also played with Arthur Leo to love. So as a CV, I don't think it's a bad one. Um, the kind of, I suppose the last 20 to 25 years, I've spent scraping away on the margins, um, trying to find my voice and now at the tender age of 57 I still haven't found it so where's my commercial will that do <laughs> all right with that now <laughs> well, yeah I mean we're all a work in progress aren't we some more than others <laughs> oh goodness put that on a t-shirt Barry oh please <laughs> well all of it I have to be a fairly big t-shirt <laughs> mind you this one's quite baggy goodness all right so um what do you uh attribute all of that opportunity to um well i don't know i i, I suppose um taking the right drugs in the right circles at the right time i mean i've always been interested in psychedelic drugs um still am uh, i microdose mushrooms uh regularly I only take five nowadays for the the cognitive functioning and uh sort of uh, mental acuity side of it, which I believe they're doing, uh, the execs in Silicon Valley are doing at the moment. Hello, brothers and sisters. Damn you. Um, but, but I don't know, I, I've, I've kind of, I've always tried to work on me playing and work on me creativity generally. But, I, you know, I've had some, I've had some extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily gifted mentors, Marky Smith, uh, Lee Mavis, and it's impossible not to evolve and learn in the presence of people like that. You know, even though they have a reputation of being difficult, should we say, uh, they are clearly extraordinarily gifted, unique and original artists. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always, if I had an ambition, it was to be a game changer, not to be famous, not mm -hmm. to be rich, have the impact of someone say like Stravinsky or Charlie Parker or Picasso, who's mm -hmm. one of my favorite musicians, uh, especially the ballads. But uh, I suppose it's a bit of a megalomania, like a sublimated megalomania thing. I would like to think there is a before and after. Now, I might not get there, but, you know, some of us are in the gutter, but others gather no moss. Yeah. Mm. As Oscar Wilde never said, and who could blame him because it makes zero sense whatsoever. <laughs> I'd li just like to point out that the, the word Schenectady, uh, where <laughs> Shannon is from... Uh, we've 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 retooled this to have a new meaning, which is Schenectady is that wonderful feeling of waking up early and realizing you can go back to sleep, like serendipity, but the sleep version of it. What's this? Hey, goodie bag! Hey, goodie bag for a baddie! Oh, no, it's not. I'm genuinely moved, even though I remain. Oh, thank you. So I'm looking at my Schenectady goodie bag. Oh, is there a fridge magnet in here? <gasps> oh, so is that you know? I know a smell and all that, right? Is that a hint? No, it's connected to Mug. I'm the happiest person in the world. <laughs> but for all of those who want to go back to sleep in the morning, which is me, and I will drink coffee in that every day and then try and go back to sleep. Fighting waves of caffeine as I go. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. So. Q, Q, unmitigated hilarity. We, I told Barry the name of the town that I was from, and he just thought it was the absolute most oh, beautiful Oh my world God. Word. It was like being wrapped in a favorite quilt while having brandy <laughs> butter poured into your ears simultaneously. <laughs> Schenectady. I mean, that's just, you know, phonetically, there is no equal. You know, glockenspiel, maybe plinth, like a bit of plinth. Have you heard that one by plinth? 
Yeah, I haven't won a trophy since 1995. For all my blue friends here, including my missus, who's probably now going to finish with me, and Dylan Elsie Casino. You hate me now, don't you, lad? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like your Schenectady. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I overwhelmed. really am. Mm. <laughs> That's so sweet. I don't, you know, that I, that is now my go-to mug. You realised it. I have one with a, a picture of a, a quirky sort of cartoon of a Volkswagen camper van on it. But that baby, that's me. Mm-hmm. It's connected to because I'm always going. Right, <laughs> my lovely partner Rachel. All right, yeah, every time I wake her up for work, and it happened this morning, and she's, she looks after ugly babies in the NHS, only the ugly ones though. And when I wake her up, she goes. In this voice, five more minutes. And her daughter started doing it. Lola, it's time for school. Five more minutes. But it turns out it's usually about 32 more minutes, actually. Because there's a sequence of five more minutes and at least five or six of them. Mm. Draw your own curtains. But so it's connected to the, the, the feeling of... Uh, waking up too early and realizing you can go back to bed. Is that not one of the most joyous facets yeah. of the human condition? That's that's Barry's uh, definition. That no, that's my ba- defi- that's Barry's it will definition. Be. You watch. You watch. If I repeat that enough, Schenectady, that wonderful sense of Schenectady, just as you doze and back, the triumph, oh, bed. Mm. The, the actual definition, it's a Native American word for a place beyond the pine. Which I, and I think that, that there is a symbiosis there because that's where the dream takes you when you go back to sleep is the place beyond the pines. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Schenectady. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we are basically Adirondack Mountains, so not too far off. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But all right, Schenectady tangent aside. Yes. You're welcome, Gary McCarthy, Mr. Mayor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, get me, listen, Gary McCarthy, right. <laughs> Get me over to Schenectady and I'll be in the advert for the place. Look, I'm from Liverpool. I'd never heard of Schenectady before I met Shannon Peterson. And now I'm here getting paid by the mayor <laughs> to advertise your beautiful place between the pines. Between, beyond, under the pines. Whatever. Over, hovering, hovering <laughs> over the pines in your tourist information film, which I get paid handsomely for and become a raging alcoholic. <laughs> Again, become as if I need to become one. But don't forget, if there's anyone under the age of 12, drink vodka for breakfast because life is pointless. Is that okay? Tell your mum I sent you. Problem? I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the Liverpool Council will fund me with that message going into the schools. <laughs> and smear off. And, and little vodka-flavoured water. Water-flavoured vodka. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Covered up, it might be a Rembrandt. My mum says that, and I've still got no idea what it means. No, it's probably a plug of phlegm, actually, mother. If it was a Rembrandt, I mean, just, I've had to go to the Royal with that one. Well, I had a coughing fit this morning, coughed up a Mogdaliani, bum bum, and a couple of Rembrandts. Oh, really? I wonder what that terrible, what's his name? That terrible art critic, Snoot. I can't even think of his name. Oh, dreadful Dorbs. What's his name? Can you think of it? The white haired. They were the poshest voice of all time. I feel like that's a lot of art <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, yeah, indeed. It's kind of the, the target demographic, but I'll think of that later. What's his name? Well, I'll think of that later. But I probably right. won't. So thinking of it later. We'll put a pin in that. Yes, we will. So uh, what we're specifically looking to uh, kind of study here, to look at here, mm-hmm. is like building brand image ah. in a music community, that kind of thing, and ah. finding success. I believe so, yes. So You're talking to the wrong person. Then success? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd better leave now then. But, I mean, it's a brand image. Now, I know I actually think about this kind of thing, even though it can be spun in a horribly corporate way. You know, the idea of um, artistic identity with integrity, mm-hmm. I think, is extremely important. I have zero interest in doing anything for commercial means. Obviously, we yeah. all need to be paid, but ultimately, I can't do anything I don't believe in. Like, I will not sing a song that I don't like. Yeah, I, you, You'll be aware that I run open mic nights and go out doing covers, but if someone co- comes up and goes, hey, lad, you know that, um, that one by Deacon Blue, what is it, real gone kid? Ooh. Or, you know, that to me, Kexel on fire, you know, by Kings of Leon and all that. <laughs> it's like, darling, I would rather die if that's all right. 
I would rather set fire to my eyes if that's okay. And that's my position on it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have no career. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mm. I mean, I, like in terms of brand identity, I think people know, I mean, you girls know who I am and what I'm about. Yeah. You know, this is it. This is yeah. my brand identity. Rambling incoherently and going off at that many tangents that it's like there's more than yeah. 360 degrees in a circle. Yeah, it's 362. ADHD hour. Yes, indeed. It, welcome to ADHD. <laughs> uh, trigger, trigger. Happy place, dark room. Uh, uh, Ritalin. Uh. And this part of the podcast is sponsored by Ritalin. Yes. <laughs> I want kickbacks off, so it's what that smear off Ritalin and Schenectady. They're my sponsors. Are they now? Mm, they will be. Oh, goodness. Yes. All right. Oh, let's see. Where do we want to go from here? Uh, the pub. <laughs> Shenanigans, actually. I, I wouldn't mind. They're a lovely pub. Oh, no, in fact, no, don't go there. If you're one of them terrible suits that goes to a pub once every three months, just stay in the house. Drink diamond white. Do us all a favor. So, uh, you run a lot of open mics in mm. town. Mm. The ones I haven't been sacked from, yeah. <laughs> well, um, tell us a bit about that. Come down and, you know, pick my what's left of my brains. Yeah, because wh- one thing I'm kind of big on, and I think you girls know this about me, is about if I've got anything that people need to know, then, um, then I will share it, as long as they're not a cunt. Because it's wrong to encourage cunts. Because they put their <laughs> cunty energy into the universe and then one has to extract it by means of an exorcism. And that's not really my target demographic, to be fair. But certainly if people come with respect, I always say that one of my um, sort of missions on this miserable spinning piece of gravel that we call Earth is to look after the cool kids. You know? So that really. I, think I also you do, do a good job of that. Well, th- that's awfully kind of you. And I, I also uh, do an open session in a place called Round the Corner, Wednesday, 7 30 till 11, behind Ted Hughes by London Road. And it, that's an interesting one in the sense of it's got a PA and a drum kit and amps. So it's developing into a band open session. We've got a death metal band called Carnal Rot who are playing on Wednesday. And uh, that really will be a very life affirming experience, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, but mm. what's what's nice about your open mics, Barry, is they're always so collaborative. You really encourage that. Some open mics you go to, it's very, like, clicky. you do your own thing yeah, and clicky. Well. But, you know, even um, the introduction to this show is you playing Strawberry Love. Because I went up to you sure. at Round the Corner and I said, hey, I have a song I want to sing, but I can't play it. Can you play me something bluesy? Well. I mean, you, you know, you're a vibe, aren't you, Sean? And, it, like, I really enjoyed it. And I, I, the idea of vibing with people who are on a similar wavelength is, mm-hmm. is kind of, I'm all about that. But also, if you can set an environment where other people can dip their toes in that, then fantastic. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, uh, music at its great, greatest and its best is collaborative mm-hmm. and collective. I, I really don't like this kind of, it's a very male thing of that, hey, uh, well, you know, I've done my bit and I'm so technically great and superior to you and I'm judging you. I think it's a load of bollocks. And I think people need to check themselves when they're like that because actually you are hilarious, you know, and that's it, really. I, I was going to go on a big rant now, but I haven't got the energy. <laughs> mm. um, well, no, it is It is nice and it is a lot of people who, who run open mics, I would have been, like, intimidated to ask them to collaborate. But, but I you're brilliant. Why would you? You know, I'm, I'm not... I'm, well, I'm not be, because people have that kind of cold energy. I, 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 you, know, you know, well, it, it, karma's a bitch, you know, and that will come back to them. Yeah, sorry. Sorry to go all 5G. You hear that? You. Karma's a bitch. If you want to, you, you reap what you sow, if you want to be like that, you, you will end up reaping the rewards of that energy. Mm-hmm. I think so. Anyway. Well, even that's that's it's one science. Th- yeah, no, that's I found it in the community myself. Like, um, if I I do an open mic or I I play somewhere and someone comes up to me and is like, "Oh my God, we run this kind of night. We do this. We'd love to get you involved. We'd love to have you as like a feature artist, whatever. Sure. Sure. Play a gig." If I just respond enthusiastically, I get the call, and then the person who goes, "Oh yeah, whatever." Well, they don't, and it's I it's just as simple you know, as I'm that. You're sort of like improving something. Yeah. I mean, you're going to set me a subject, but something's just coming in mind, so I'm just going to do like a little ten second piece. Go on. Which summarizes that. Move that mic and down. And it also shows my interest in chromatic harmony. Yeah. 
Are we good? Go ahead and move oh, yeah, the mic down again. Open my cunt. You love the fact that you can play like Eddie Van Halen, but you're failing. Yeah, you're failing. With your judgmental cold energy to paraphrase. Shannon Peterson, you need some schenectady. Go back to sleep, baby. America, go back to sleep. Thanks a lot. Sure. With, 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 with apologies to Bill Hicks via seance. Yeah, you try. You fail, but you try. Oh, my goodness. The anxiety of middle-aged men with guitars. Oh, what are people thinking of me? Who cares? They're not. They're thinking about how they're going to pay their fucking gas bill, actually, darling. Okay? Preach. Love you. Preach, Barry. Love you, but at a safe distance through the wrong end of a telescope. I always say that. Well, not always, because if I said it all the time, I'd, I'd probably be sectioned. But I love, I love humanity at a safe distance. Mm-hmm. Definitely a quarter of a mile. <laughs> yeah, as an abstract. But then when you've got to practice, you're like, ooh, ooh no, ooh, trigger, ooh, no, quiet place, uh, quiet room, uh, girl, listen, blah, blah. So with that, <laughs> <laughs> but that that pause then it's just all day because it, it was like it was like you've seen two thousand one a space odyssey, right? Yes. The bit where all the air gets sucked out the airlock. Yeah. The pause goes. <laughs> now we're moving swiftly on. It's the pause. It sucks all the air out the room. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it was how the computer's not even involved here. <laughs> I thought so. Um, what's that one where? Um, Daisy, give me your overcoat. My mind is fading, Dave. My mind is fading. He disconnects the computer. Mm-hmm. Kubrick, eh? <laughs> I. But I prefer Doctor Strange, love. Fair enough. Mm. Look uh, here, Mandrake. Biggest Floridization of war of the biggest comic plot ever. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. Well, I think we have time for probably one more question. Yes. So, um, what do you think is the best advice you could give someone who's starting out? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, Thank you. Be militantly yourself. Militantly yourself. Think about what you can bring to the table. Okay, so it's, it's, a, 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 it's, it's a kind of main point with some sub points. Um, find your own voice. Be original. You know, I, I think I, I encounter a lot of artists who kind of think they can get somewhere by playing safe. Mm-hmm. Now, th- that may well be the case, but playing safe is not who you are. You know, music is a conversation. Lyrics are a conversation. Talk about your experiences. Talk about your experiences from your perspective of the world rather than one that you think is going to play well on Radio 6 or the NMA because that is the doorway to utter phoniness. Is that why you like improvisation so much? Possibly. Because, I mean, I, I, I think if you can get into that thing where you're, you're inhabiting the moment yeah. and on a flow. I mean, you could be like improvising in the style of Red Rum Club or something. <laughs> Nothing against Red Rum Club. Plenty, actually. Um, but you know what? You Tell us how you really feel, Barry. Oh, all right, then. You're all lovely. <laughs> Especially the phonies. <laughs> well, I'm now moving swiftly on. And now, Ellie, with the weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's all oh, doom and gloom. It's hurricanes for the next hundred years. No, I do the, uh, the nature documentary. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Attenborough. Yes. Apex Pred, great band. Bad name called it? There, what? there is now. They're out there somewhere. Apex Predators. I've been listening to them a lot recently. Mm. They're really quite dark, but, you know, with a kind of flashes of light. <laughs> Apex Predators. So what are they going to be like? Speed metal with a female singer who used to work on a bank. Okay. I thought That's so. Me. No, you never. You used to work on a bank, Magic. Most people... I, I used to work for Barclay Guard, and I'm a raging Marxist. How does <laughs> that work? Oh, can now. I'm not a hypocrite. I, wor- I worked at, my mom's an accountant. I worked at her accounting firm for five years. 
Oh, there you go. Really? I look forward to meeting her. I could do with a creative account. She'll Actually, be here in May. not that I've got any money to account creatively. Um, when I worked for Barclay Card, this big exec came around. He went, when you're here, we want you to live the brand. And I was like, Barclay, what, you want me to dress up like a fucking credit card? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> I'm not a hypocrite, it says here, hypocritically. That's all right. John Lindsay asked this be a safe space for hip- hypocrisy. Oh, actually, who said that? John Lindsay. That's brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Is he a writer? Or is he just a <laughs> drunk like me? Uh, oh, John Lindsay. John Lindsay, I meet you in the pub. In shenanigans in 14 minutes and you're paying. <laughs> See, it's a conversation, <coughs> right? It's he just do a load of random discords and just any shit that comes to the top of your head, just testify, baby. Uh. All right. And with that, do we want to move on to our couch concert? I think so. Are yes, we taking love. into account my bad back? <laughs> I might not be able to get up, but you know. This is a song called Stuff, and I've attempted to meld a, a deconstruction of dialectic materialism with the vibe of James Brown. Very unsuccessfully, I should point out. And it goes not at all like this. Still got no good turn, that's all right in the meter. Still got no good turn, that's all right in the meter. Yeah, still got no good turn, that's all right in the meter. Yeah, yeah, you know you're going to turn them up, so. Big wheels, no yellow, go turn that so right in the meter. Yeah! Funny chord, that look it up. Tell him I sent you. Uh huh. Still got no, gonna fill that hole that full of beat. Yeah, you heard me, right? Yes, I'm looking at you and me simultaneously. Still you had no gonna fill that whole rattle on the beaker Basta fuck Still you had no gonna turn that so right in me Yeah, yeah, you go to turn the motherfucking die Still you had no gonna fill that whole rattle full of beat On sick every time, yo Never have you do that thing Baby, you don't know you love it. We'll never have you do that thing. No, your love never got you do that thing. No, your love never got you do that borderline little thing, baby. Uh huh. Shaka Khan. Still yet another one, and that's all right in a meter. Still yet another gonna fill that door out full of beak. Yeah, still yet another gonna turn that so right into me. Get me when I tell y'all. I never have you do that thing. Be I know you love it. I never have you do that thing. Well, be I know you love it. Never have, never have you do that thing. If it didn't leave love, never have you do that. Borderline legal thing, baby. I love it when you call me, baby. I love it when you call me, baby. Love when you call me, baby. I love it when you call me, baby. I love when you call me, baby. I love it when you call me, baby. Love it when you call me, love it when you call me, baby. Still yet enough gonna turn that soul right in the meter. Still yet enough gonna fill that hole right full of beaker. Still yet enough gonna turn that soul right into me. Wait for it. Never gotta you do that thing. Be on your love. Never have you do that thing. No, you don't look. Never gotta you do that thing. 
No, 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 how you do that Boy, I need a thing to me, baby I love it when you call me, baby I love it when you call me, baby Love it when you call me, baby I love it when you call me, baby Love it when you call me, baby I love it when you call me, baby Love it when you call me, love it when you call me, baby Love it when you call me, baby I love it when you call me, baby Love it when you call me, baby, I love it when you call me, baby. Love it when you call me, baby, and I love it when you call me, baby. Love it when you call me, baby, I wanna love it when you just call me. All right. <laughs> Anytime in an alternative present, that she was bound to fall that. into like some kind of Philip K. Dick nightmare. <clears throat> lozenge, lozenge. Lozenge, lozenge. I love that. That's another one. It's connected to a lozenge. What a great word that is. I've got a friend, a dear friend, dear departed friend of mine, Carl McLean, has a daughter called uh, Laurie, but I call her lozenge. Uh, and she doesn't laugh. And you know why? Because it ain't funny. All right, Barry. Thank you so much the, for joining the, us today. The displeasure was all mine. <laughs> Do you have anything that you want to plug? Yeah, my sink. <laughs> I've got a band called Beat Nick Hurricane. We're playing. Uh, uh, this probably will go out after we've done the gig. So go back in time and see us on the 1st of April. In the Golden Lion, Tomerton. Hi, gig. Love you. Uh, White Witch, uh, ex-mayor of Tomerton. But the Golden Lion's a special place. Even if the, the gig is in the past, go to one in the future. Or an alternative present nightmare. Lozenge, lozenge, lozenge. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. That's all right. Love it when you call me, baby. I love it when you call me, baby. Love it when you call me, baby. I love it when you call me, baby. Love it when you call me, baby. And I love it when you call me, baby. Love it when you call me, baby. I wanna love it when you just call me. Can you do it so it's a bit like distorted, like over? Brian Soul.